Welcome back uh, to the next in the seven series. This is 7E, the ANOVA two-way table. So in this case, instead of having just one treatment, run treatment set, we have two treatment sets. So example, you might be doing heat treatments and the different uh, devices that you're using. So um, two different possibilities for your options. You can do that as long as your output is only looking at one variable. So we're going to show you the example. It's just an extension of the one-way table. There's just one little tricky thing I want to make sure that you understand just to not, not mess you all up. All right, so let's get started. So the idea was that for the model for the one-factor way ANOVA, just to kind of reiterate again, was that there was some value that you have of uh, the output is equal to something that's in common to all observations plus something that's due to this treatment's deviation from that kind of overall average plus, you know, our general error that we've always talked about. And then so is each of these treatments basically are going to improve, are going to have a different value here. We need to see if they're important or not. In a two-factor ANOVA, same idea except for that you have something due to the A effect treatments and then something due to the B effect treatments. And so that's the one thing that you really kind of want to pay attention to is that we actually have two different effects going on here at the same time, right? And so we want to make sure that we can split those up and understand what's going on there. Um, that's what we're using this for. And so you can also extend this to three-way, four-way, five-way, six-way, a whole bunch of way ANOVAs. For this class, we pretty much stick to one and two, right, for the most part, but it can be extended to n number of factors. So some of the square methods still work. So the idea here is we've just extended it. All we've actually done is added on another term for B on the end. We've added another term for B on the end for the total. The only thing difference here is that we actually, each one has its own degrees of treatment for the treatment. So we have, this is, this is different for each effect. Right, so we'll have a KA and a KB, so to speak, right? That'll each have their own. Degrees of freedom are a little bit different, like I said, for the, for this idea is that each one has its own K. So this KA is K for the A effect. And this is a, or, or also known as the number of treatments of A. And KB is the K for the B effect, which is the number of treatments or levels or whatever you want to use of B, right? And so the kicker here is that you also have to look at the error, you know, is this multiplier thing. So you have to be careful with that one. So we'll talk about how to do that when we look at the table. Using a table makes it makes no problem. Just want to make sure you kind of pay attention to what's going on with it all. So the table is similar. So again, these add this way, these add this way, that's no problem. So this is addition, this is division. So that's that way and that way and that way. The kicker, however, is that A, when you come to the F value, that's one of the one you gotta watch out for. FA is this one divided by this one, the error, and B is this one divided by this one, right? So do not tell me what this is. This, that doesn't mean anything. So don't, do not do this. It has a meaning, but not for this class, right? So don't do that. That is utterly meaningless. Right, so it's always, always, always the error in the denom. Right, that's always the error in the denominator. So as long as you remember that, you'd be fine. The biggest mistake I see students do on this one is they calculate the A one by taking this one and dividing by that one, and that's not true. It's this divided by the error, this one is this one divided by the error. As long as you remember that, everything is perfectly smooth on this, nothing different than before. So let's do an example to kind of show you how this gets done in R. So again, I'm loading up my data. This time I'm using an angle in there instead. Uh, position and angle are both factors, so I need to do that. I have a special kind of thing in here because I'm doing two ways because R does its own little goofy one, so we're gonna do a special one. And this one I have to use the ANOVA with a capital A, and I need to also set it as a type three. Um, why we use type three is beyond the scope of the class, just no type three is the one you want. 
Um, it basically says that I don't care what order I put them in. If you use one of the other types, it switches around. So again, it's just a wrapper. It's a special one that you have to do when you go above one wing. And your results get pretty much similar, except for this time you actually get the full residual type idea, but the same idea happens. Um, you get a position, and angle, and residuals. You get your F values that you're looking for. And you have some evidence that factors matter. Why do I say that? Because now that I've added this position, this position one goes with an F value of 5. And it's big enough because this is, you know, this is sm smaller than 0.05 or smaller than my alpha right for position that actually matters um but angle is kind of close it's kind of close to being less than 0.05 so that's questionable that's why i kind of get a little dot there right so but now i've split it up into two different possibilities okay so that's a different way to look at the table and then don't worry about how to do this by hand just know how to fill in the blanks in the table and I've given you, t I'll post up two sets of example ANOVA problems that you can kind of get used to doing just to give you some practice and experience um, when we talk about that. So this is just extending the idea of a two-way, one-way ANOVA to two-way ANOVA. Really, the biggest slide you want to really pay attention to here is this one. And you want to pay attention to how this gets done, right? And if you want to make yourself a cheat sheet, you want to make yourself an Excel program, you want to write yourself some code to do this for an exam, that is perfectly fine by me. That's building your engineering toolbox. So know how to do this table, how to fill these in if it has blanks. That's the key part. All right. Hope that helps with you. And I'll talk to you later.